The Backdoor GA podcast for 2023 is now brought to you by Steed Motor Group. For your personalised vehicle shopping experience, visit steedmotorgroup.ie. This podcast is sponsored by Steed Motor Group Clare Galway, supplying a wide variety of new and used vehicles. steedmotorgroup.ie, taking the work out of car shopping. So delighted now to be joined by Lock Gray, uh, Senior Herder Paul Hubbin and Hugh G. McEntee of Portona to look back on Galway's defeat yesterday uh, to Limerick. But before we do that, uh, Paul, a question came in um, for you in the question box. Um, it, was, it was kind of in relation to Hugh Jean's Portona team from a particular chunky haze and he was just wondering who was your favourite player of that Portona team? I had no favourites. <laughs> <laughs> ah, sure. Hard to look past you, like you know. Sure, it's class. <laughs> What's your response to that, Eugene? Well, I wouldn't have been a standout, put it that way. But I tell you, um, I used to mind my box fairly, fairly well. Now, I'm fairness, so I, I didn't have a whole place to go. But I had great hurlers beside me to look after me as well. So, um, look at that, I suppose Joe would be there. But there's a lot of lads I heard it down through the years there that. Made that lad too, you know, that um, were, were as good as anybody when they got the floor. Like, you know, Hazy there was fairly handy as well. Took he was a different dilemma. You know, the boys had all their own characteristics. Like, you know, you had a few of the, the cannons there as well. Ali, sure, look at curling beside him. You know, you learn every day. You know, like anyway, like a four-time all-star, never won in Ireland. Ireland. I says, not too many for Galway that done that, you know. So in my look and hurling with him, I suppose Ali would have, be my lad looking up to and then on him, Joe, and looking at the other lads, like they looked up to him as well. Like, but they worked well with each other. Look at we were just blessed with a combination of somebody you'd have three forwards going well, and you're wondering you had your best three players on them, and all of a sudden three other lads pop up. So, like, it was hard to manage at times, like, you know, and it was just a smidge post then as well. Like, for Andrew there, probably played with Paul a few years there as well. Um, you know, and they just met two engines. So, like, you know, there was an awful lot of lads to look up to, you know. Just on that, Eugene, um, you were back involved with Portona this year. How did you find that experience? Um, yeah, well, we had a lot to do um, looking at what the, the club teams had gone forward with Thomas's and that. And there was a few teams coming at their heels now. Like, Ray have done some great work the last five, six years. You could see that. And, and they are getting there. And unfortunately, last year, Probably, you know, got a bit of a rub of the green. You know, they probably said, if we've done this, we've done that. You know, a lot of people are asking questions, would they come at them again? Would Lachray be strong enough to come at Thomas's again? My word, where they were the just, you know, and Thomas's had to just pull the, the, the a trick out of the bag by putting the centre forward and making that move the second day. Probably just maybe caught, caught, caught Lachray with just the way they steadied up. But look at I would have taught maybe myself Lachray would probably would have better legs up in Crow Park when it came to a, a faster field drier, drier conditions. And probably, you know, Thomas is are able to root it out now in Galway. And it's only a matter of time because the teams are coming behind them. With us, with Bertumna, we were a long way back. We were, you know, looking at the other end of the stick. Now we were, we were, I was watching it from the outside and just taught our lads, you know, we were just going through the motions and they were slipping away from it. And, you know, it was about getting involved with a few of the lads, like Kevin Ains, Ali Cannon, you know, Damien Coleman and Jimmy Heffern and, uh, and the manager with Park Lohan. Four of us really got into where we could work on the fight, you know, and try to improve them to get back up. So we had two good years. We had our tough first year to senior B and, you know, we went down against Scott Gallagher in Loch Ray, and then we said, right, that's the standard we had to set ourselves for the following year, not looking past anything else, just get to that standard to challenge the top teams there, where there's five or six teams that are in Galway now, that, you know, you can, you look up and say, right, you know, you run them on a good day, and even even day, you might get the other side of them. So our following year was to just win each game as we could, get that qualification back up to senior end status. And, you know, it was very hard. It was it's tough. You know, um, when I left the game, you could see it changing. And it was changing really rapid every five years. You could see there was another level, another step up. Um, professionalism, like, you know, it's down to the individual. What time he's able to put in. You could see the setups with the teams that are going well. That... I think you've just muted yourself there, um, Eugene. 
just on my, on my experience where I just thought like we had to do extra to stay with it. And I just found that, you know, that was a big ask that time, but it's the general goal now. You actually, you put it into a program all week and it's, you know, it suits teams and it will take a lot for our lads now to kind of get up there to the, to the high, to the, to the standard of five or six more teams that are there at the moment. And there isn't, there's not a whole lot in between them. You know, Sarsfields, we've played Sarsfields, and I thought maybe they didn't give themselves credit. You know, Turlock are there. Um, Sarsfields and Turlock had cracking under 20 games. Maybe they took a bit out of them going into the, the latter end of the, the senior championship. You know, um, some people say, oh, it should be good for lads. But, you know, what? I don't know. Like Lock River staying fresh, and um, they seem to be more fresher uh, going at the end of the terms than maybe the previous year. Lock River might have, you know, they made a few switches, found a few more lads. And, you know, they capitalised and they got another step forward. So I think it's not too far around the corner for them. As for Clarence Bridge, they went up against Thomas the last couple of years there. I just think Lockray had more on the plate when it came to, you know, forwards. That's the score. You know, Clarence Bridge are heavily, you know, relying on, on, on an island. And, you know, I hate to say it, but you come up against some team that have a right good hurler as a backman. And if he's not getting ball... You know, depending on freeze to get you to a county final, you know, I don't think that will work. That will only get you through group games. Just on that, Paul, there, like Eugene was talking about, not various challengers. Your own year last year and the journey and everything to the county final, I presume as players, is something you all enjoyed last year, like pushing for that Tom Callanan Cup. Uh, yeah, so look, when it's just like anything when you're going well you're going to be enjoying it like there's times there when things aren't going well and you can go ah you know if this and if that if you want but look we we did have a good run and like I think we won all the games except for the county final so as I said like it was it was just you, every time you're going to the pitch you're nearly buzzing you know what I mean and probably we did have a good few players this year there was a good strong panel and like even the bits you're doing in training would have been a high standard like you know and as Eugene said like you know it has changed the game like lads are pushing themselves so like look it was it, it was great to be involved but look just and, and great to be part of it and great to be something I suppose like that's going so well but just fell short so just have to go again as simple as that What changed from previous years uh, to this year like which got you so far? Um I think similar to what Eugene's on about, we might have been reliant on one or two forwards to do a lot of scoring, but it was a spreader scorers, you know. Um, you know, like Martin McManus there is a fine this year. You know, he was kind of in and out, kind of like he I don't he might even have started all the games the year before. Um, Joe Mooney in beside him, the two big lads inside in the full forward line was a change where you probably had kind of smaller, faster lads in, so it kind of gives you more options, I suppose. Um, and then just having lads coming off the bench with 15 minutes to go, like, you know, that are well able to play as well and probably very unlucky not to be starting. Having them coming in, finishing the game is a big thing, like, you know, because, like, it's kind of right now and it, the, the physicality is gone. So by the, the last 10 minutes, like, you know, there's plenty of time for the home stretch for good players to be coming on and doing damage. Like, so I think that, that basically saying, like, we had a good panel, you know, we probably had a panel of, 20 plus really lads ready that could play anywhere like you know Did management come in and change the players there or like challenge the players I mean because you're talking there about some of the players maybe that were in and out of the team and then there seemed to be kind of those couple of players that were just mainstays in the team then this year uh, Look there's no there's no hiding it like you know we do probably have a good like I suppose a strong back backroom team like you know and we're probably very lucky that they're all from Loch Ray. Um, you know, and they're well experienced. Like Gavin Keary's a great coach there. He's been involved with Clare and um, Dublin, and you know, and, and whatnot. And to have him there is kind of look. It's it, it's a great thing for us. And then have the fact he's from Loch Then there's obviously another big bonus. And Tommy Kelly too ha had been involved with Dublin, and Shane Cusack was involved in UIG and go with minors and whatnot. So like, look, there's no denying it. Like, there's a strong background team there, and. They are putting in good work, but at the same time, you know, the players have to give it back as well. And, you know, they probably got the response they were looking for in terms of it coming back from the players and it put us in a good place. And I presume there's a real hunger and everything there to, to go again this year? 
it wasn't my first county final to be in the last few years, man. <laughs> there too. So like, and to be, I think I don't know how many played in against over the years, but you'll always always want to keep coming back. Like you know, as as long as my knees hold out, we we'll keep coming back and look at them. What's the easiest way to put it? I suppose like when you get so close and you lose like that, um, in a replay, the only thing you can do really. He's come back to win it. Anything else is, is I suppose, isn't good enough for you. Like you know, do you have any memories of uh, playing against Eugene in the county final? I do, I do. <laughs> There's one there where I'd say I can't remember the year. I think it could have been 2013. I'd say um, I was actually I think I started wing forward or centre forward that year, um, and I remember I think someone shot the ball across the box and was coming towards the end of the game. Um, and he was kind of in around the full back line, around the six yards. And I was like, right, he's going to come at me strong here now. So I'm going to poke it down with my hurl and buy the tackle off him, thinking he'll overcommit. And um, and then I get, I get in a goal. But the fucker, sure, I was young. He was a bit older than me. He was kind of cute. So when I came, he came like a train, stopped and pulled back. So I literally batted the ball straight into his path. And I was going, oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Or like after the game, someone caught me saying, "Geez, you should have caught that and you should have buried it." And I was like, "Well, do you know, it wasn't my thoughts." Like, but I didn't expect him. But he probably showed an experience where he probably rushed me and pulled back out, kind of like like a full back now, probably nearly having to make the decision when someone's coming at him and he's a lad over his shoulder and don't make it easy for him to pop it over. Like he he was around a long time, I suppose. So that was one I had. Other than that, I was usually uh, down to the end of the pitch. <laughs> Do you remember that, Eugene? I do, yeah. Actually, that was my probably last year, Herman, 13, 14, I came over retirement for and to go back out for a year with the lads and like that, all right. <laughs> I suppose <laughs> my legs were probably going as well. So I had no other chance to pull that stunt, you know, <laughs> to throw the dummy. But it is, I suppose it is it's, it's experience as well. Look, I remember my first county final Brahan as a sub at 15 years of age in 1995 against Arsenal. And you're going back then to 2013. And, you know, there's a lot of county, county finals you played and a lot of experience. As I said, I went from corner forward back to the other end. I said, my next stop now was goals or else behind the goals as an umpire. You know, I was getting closer to the gate. But, uh, no, like, um, I would. I remember a lot of things in games. I remember another year, you know, I'm sure I'd have great battles with Johnny Mara. He used to love it, you know. He said to himself, if you go down woods as well. And, you know, we always left it on the field, you know. But it was, uh, look, at there was times, you know, you just wouldn't know how to be going on. And, you know, look at it. Luckily, I had so many lads that were so lively. And I suppose, and again, I suppose we had such a good team at the time. Um, if we weren't there, probably Lachray would have won two or three county finals. You know, that's bottom, bottom line, like, you know. Um, they had a team that were good enough to win one. Only that we probably had a few extra players. And that was probably the difference at that time. And we were getting a bit of experience. And I suppose had a few our learnings under a belt, like, you know, and it's like as far as it's there. You're just mad to go back at it, mad to get a touch of it again, mad to get the sense of it, like. And, um, you know, it's important to have good lads around you as well to give you that um, energy for it and give you the bite for it, you see, because in the other flip kind of that is we were expected, oh, you have to go do it again. And those people watching you and expected this just to happen. You know, that's easier said than done. So it was a credit to actually the whole bunch of lads that used to train and hurl that used to drive yourself on to just keep you having the edge because if you didn't have the edge, you know, that's the day you get turned over. And now everybody can have the edge, but um, when you're when you're experienced and you start gathering it and you start thinking of different things, there's a lot of things you don't think of when you first started out as a as a guy, you know, for county final because you're thinking of all, you know, mainly maybe only 50% of the game. Well, as you get... You learn and you, you learn hard by losing and then you start winning and you know what it took to win. And then you're wondering, well, how better can I be? You know, and that's where I suppose you, the experience comes and the lads are hurling around you and you, you kind of tweak it. You're like we took Ali Cannon over full back line. You know, he was still playing cornerback. He found himself wing forward midfield. They just put teams off. Joe came out midfield that year, put teams off. Then there was another letter on the Mara. He started to catch the eye. So like, you know, and Damien Hayes. So like you had lads, you know, that you could move around and 
You know, they were coming to the end, but they were still what the edge was there, the want. So they were finding themselves in another little position. No more than as Paul said this year, they got to come define and found a couple of players. You know, you need that, you know, and that you need more of it again to to um go forward again, like you know, because it actually, you know, when a new guy comes in the scene, well, like there's probably a lad sitting beside him saying, Jeez, I'm just as good as him, but will I take it as serious? If he does, you have two new lads next year. Because he's looking at his friend and he's looking at his buddy getting all the accolades out of it. So if that doesn't give you a pinch like what does, you know, and you kind of need that. You need that um, happening and you need to be pushing yourself the whole time. And we were just lucky. Look at it. As I said, again, we needed the edge. We needed the graphers and we tweaked things around and we found an, a new player here and there. And you have to second them in as, a, as, as quick. But when you have spores with experience and you win finance and that, the young lad is confident enough for to beside you because... He's there looking at you the whole time, you know, and you're, you're not going to let him down anyway. You'll always, you'll always give him the IQ for it, you know. Just before you, you we do get uh, into that Guy Limerick game, just something you touched on there about the edge. Is there one particular person that helped for someone to build that edge or, like, where did the hard edge come from? Um... I suppose it was the sets of brothers we had hurling. <laughs> Them lads would fight with each other. They might fight with the rest of us on the team, but like they should, you know, you had Hazel Smith, you had Cannings, like, you know, and, and one would try to better the other, like, you know, this is crazy. But then you had the lads that had to stand on their own and face them if you had to battle. But you know, you could give one of the brothers a slap and the other brother would come in and give you a help as well and he could have a dig at him, you know. It was just, <laughs> it was, we, we had that bunch of lads that were that way, like, no, but I have to say, what was what was done in the field of training and that um these lads, you know, they came from big sports backgrounds. Like a lot of these lads that we were sorry, a lot of lads that we were playing that were um there for a long time. Um they the guys were very good at sports and in general themselves, whether everything they'd done, they were very competitive. Like, you know, they just came from a bunch of lads that played rugby, soccer, a lot of these lads played kind of rugby and these lads were up playing at the at the top and a lot of things, you know, where when they went down hurling and got a touch for it, you know, they wanted to be the best. And I suppose when you have when you have that filtered down through a team, you know training is just as hard as a match and you're going to be tested and the edge is on the training field. And when you have the edge on the training field, lads going at it. And sometimes you have to jump in to calm it down. You know, that's the way the tempo is in Ireland. That's the way you're going to be facing you. You don't go down training to, and you see some lads now who take maybe the handbrake up a little bit. And there's a lad flying around the corner forward or wing forward, nobody marking him, having an all star performance. Was out the next day, thinks this is going to happen. Doesn't touch the ball. You know, you're wondering why isn't it happening? Because the age isn't there. You know, you have to be getting the hard hits of training. You have to be, you know, you really, when we were married, like, <laughs> I was unfortunate. I had to mark Joe Cannon the whole time. But she is just like, you know, that was oh, just stopping. Uh, Huh? What would you do to stop him? Oh, I had a good word in his ear and I used to try to read it before him because if I was trying to get out by him, I had to be maybe thinking that two seconds ahead of him now or else it was if I the ball went behind me, forget about it. So, you know, the thing was like, you know, but you see, that was a challenge for me. You know, I used to put my challenge against him. I wouldn't want him to score and train. You know, I'd give him as good as I get it. And the thing is, you know, Joe would go out and he'd perform the next day and he probably would say, well, Mark would probably give me his harder back than what the lad is going to mark on the next day because that was just uh, the way you, you set your standard because I said, if I can mark him, well, how should I fear any other lad? You know, I used to set my standards and if I could do, if I could get him on top of him and train him and no more than any of the other lads coming in on me. Like, you want to just, you don't want them to have an easy day, like, you know. So I suppose having that attitude maybe brought him on in a way as well because that's the edge, you know, that, that brought him on. And they were able to go and perform and not fear who they were marking in either. You know, because training, as I said, Paul and tell you know, when lads are really going for a position there, coming up to the last four or five training sessions, semi-finals, every lad is going at it hard. And, you know, that's what you want. And maybe one lad might get injured because you're going too hard. But, like, you know, you step back and some lads can get injured when they're kind of half going through things, half going through the paces because they're trying to mind themselves too much. So I always say go hard and heavy. You know, what you're going to do, the place to learn and the place to get it right is on the hurling field, the training field, as we all say it. That's the place you get things right and get down to brass tacks. And it's 30, 30, 30 minutes or two hours to 30 minutes. And, you know, as I say, they go very, very fast when you're playing county finals and semi finals. It's when you're playing a county final, 
I tell you, when when you're being beaten well, it feels like two hours out there. But when you're in a game, it only feels like 40 minutes. It goes so fast. There's so much going on. You know, so like, um, you know, as again, you learn that and Paul is smiling there, but like, the problem touches in a way because that's that's just experience, that's normality, that's the way you look at it, you know, and that's, I suppose, you, you have to strive to them levels to get the responses, you know. The reason I'm smiling is because I think, I remember, was it Matty Kenny's year or uh, Anthony Cunningham that time in 2012? And they had a say, no, it was hard running that time, like, but definitely, you know, the game has changed a lot since then with S&C now, where it's kind of more, but there was a lot of longer running that time. But I remember coming back after being in the camp and playing the first round of the championship or something. I remember looking up at the clock, it was half time, and I was like, Jesus, I was at half time already. I was like, fucking hell, I'd go another, I'd go another 10 minutes now before I'd stop at all. And then the game was over, like, and I was going, geez, I'd play another game. Do you know, I was like, Jesus, we were that fit back then. Like, now I'm looking up the clock on Jesus, this can't blow the whistle. So, <laughs> 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 Do you know what I mean? So I said, Do you know, games, games go fast, but sometimes you're kind of looking for the line too, you know. Um, I, I think yeah. older, maybe when you're younger, you're definitely more energy and sound like I'm old now, too. Like, but I'm not that old. Like. <laughs> Paul, just before we do get into um, that goal limit game, uh, you're involved with Prez Athen Rai here in the All Ireland stages this weekend, coming up against um, Terlis. How have you found the experience, I suppose, of coaching at post primary level? Um, good question. Uh, I like coaching, say, adult hurling night because I just feel and what I mean like obviously it's like it's, it's senior schools might be under 19 like so you're probably dealing with mostly 17 plus but like you kind of can do a lot of what you'd be doing yourself if you know what I mean so you're kind of passing on what you what I've probably taken in the last 10 years or whatever and it's different to stay coach under 10 like because you're kind of probably going through striking and whatnot where this is kind of like it's more or less what we'd be at ourselves you know and Look, there's a good bunch of lads there um, in the press, so um, and the standard is good. So it, it, look, it's really enjoyable. And like I always thought when I was playing, I did a bit of coaching in my earlier twenties, and I'd be kind of going, ah, I, I'll take a break now when I hit like twenty five, so I'd focus on my own. But even doing that bit there now, you'd kind of get the graft for nearly coaching. And you're coming towards the end of your career. You obviously you nothing beats playing, but it's something that you could do, like you know. And do you feel press? That's right. Be there, there, about for all Ireland honours this year. Oh yeah, no doubt about it. Yeah, I think. Look, I, I think if we come and perform um, on the day, and that, that's what it's all about. You know, you can only say you're going well in training and whatnot, but if we come and perform, we'll be there, thereabouts. And I do think it'll take a, it'll take a fair team to beat us if we if we turn up. You know, just around that team, there there obviously seems to be a lot of talk about. Uh, Aaron Island um, on that President and Rye team and he's probably someone that's highlighted but like there's already talks about him around go GA circles of how good this this lad can be as a hurler Oh he's here look he's a he's a brilliant talent like but you have to remember he's 15 16 years of age like and lots can change between now and that and it's about getting him right and he, look he's really into it and he's mad for it and he's very Look, as I said, he's an exceptional talent. Like I, he could be liable to go to score one fifteen. But the one thing I like about him is he's humble. Like he just gets on with it. He won't say too much about it. And um, uh, look, he's, he's definitely an exciting. Thing and it's something, to, it's something for Gaul hopefully to look forward to for the future with him. Like you know, um, he's he has a bit of everything. Like he's got pace. He's he's accurate in that. But uh, yeah, as I said, you know, he's still young. Like you know, I wouldn't be putting too much pressure on him. Like. And this is the semi-final this weekend, is it, against Turles? Yeah. And sorry, just for people uh, who don't know, that's on this Saturday, is it? Saturday in Burry, yeah. yeah. Good stuff. Good. Best of luck in the uh, semi-final. But on Galway Limerick, there's one incident that's been highlighted uh, all over the media today, and it is that... Uh, Kyle Hayes' strike on Brian Kincannon. Eugene, obviously, Kyle Hayes, in fairness, does get a bit of a strike across the shins. 
the shin just before uh, it goes out for a sideline, and you can see maybe that's why he's frustrated and he just kind of does does strike back. But your only in- instincts on that, like obviously there, Kyle Hayes should ultimately see red. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think the ref, he kind of held back. He pulled for small things, you know, during the game. And then when the big thing happens, you know, kind of uh, there was an incident before that. Like Tom Mahan got hopped around there for a space of 10 minutes, Limerick done everything to take him out. But, you know, and he took a few whacks, like, you know. And I suppose, lad, I don't know what the way to go. Maybe a lad stand up, the captain come up to the ref and say, hey, how many times have we lad? this lad? Like three times on the draft. What are you doing about Like, you're, you're giving us three, he's grand. But I says... You know, are we going? Is it going to be like this all the way? Let it be. You know, and I suppose you know some lads, some of these lads know about the refs before, and they have played other games under them. Now, you, you know, they have played colleges, they have played challenge matches behind closed doors, and you come across referees. And there's some referees that like to let a lot go. There's some that like to take a charge and don't want to be told by anything. But I always think a ref that chatters to a guy. And it's straight, and a lad is straight. It, it's very simple. You, you pull, the, you you start, you start laying the law down before the match starts. You go into the two dressing rooms. I don't know that they still do it. I haven't been in the dressing room in the intercounty scene lately. But the ref, if he goes into a dressing room and and you know stands in the middle of the dressing room and says to the players, and he says, "This is the crack now, lads." And like, I don't care. Don't come back to me after the match and say I am the worst referee and of the BB of a ref all over because I sent a lad off. I warned you well beforehand, and this is the way it's going to be done today. So it's up to you what way you want to conduct yourselves out there. Now, Kyle Hayes is a big man. It's just, it's a lazy slap. A lazy slap to flick back. The size of that man. Like, if you looked at Cook Cannon, he could have just hit him in the shoulder and put him back on his arse, and it would have been just as bad. But, like, for a big man, that's you a, a hurl like that to give a lad a tap. Now, I'd say to myself, you know, Kyle, he was his head there, you know, really. Well, like he should, the game was won, you know, they were winning, you know, he gets a free out, he should be putting the ball back, laughing at your man, is that your best lap, like, you know, and hitting him in the shoulder and putting him back in his arse. Instead of giving this flick that we're all talking about, lazy, you ask the question, you know, the ma- his manager has to ask, well, is that a bit of tiredness at the end? He wasn't thinking straight, he's my man, you know, I have to pull him up for that. But your guarantee agency was getting away with it for ages. For ages and ages and ages, and all the late slaps he was getting until one referee, and they did pull him for it, and they send him off, and he went off with his hands up in the air, wondering, feeling the worst lad in the world, why everybody is down on my back. But like you know, what the camera doesn't know, you're getting away with it, and you're getting away with it, and you're playing in a fine line. But if you're going to be playing in a fine line, let it be a fair challenge, not a lazy, dirty one. Like this lad is striking at the hammer. A lot of lads are big, and a lot of lads are small. You know what I mean? And I see lads running with a hurling. They're running and they're waving it. Like. And if a lad turns quick, his hurl is still up in the air. Like he, he could be unfortunate and awkward. He, he's going to get caught as well. And there's all the more circumstances, but a ref can be, should be clever to that as well. But no, linesman, he didn't see much. It's the greatest thing in Ireland. They don't see a whole lot. You know, <laughs> I have, I have a, I, at times I do laugh at it. Now, to be quite honest, you know, a ref, all fairness to the game, the speed is playing, you have to think, he's up and down, he's up and down. The one time he wants a bit of help is his linesman. Now, because he's still, if his back is to us, or like he's running to us, and Kyle Hayes is back and everything, he can't see through the melee. Lord Jesus, it's like, it's very hard for him to call it either. Like, And you're going to get a crowd roaring, and you're going to get a new lad hitting him. Did you see that? Did you hear his ref? You know, if he didn't see it, put the hand up, and call the linesman over and say, right, did he slap him? And be brave and stand up and say, look it, I didn't see it. My linesman said you did. Again, the ball is in his court. He has to make the call. No, but again, Kyle Hayes, man of his structure, you know, had a great game yesterday. Like, you know, all fairness to him, he was lucky. He was on a yellow card. First one, there was a few more lads. Like Park Mannion pulled a little light one across Morrissey near the end of the game. You know, if you give a yellow card for that, that was lazy as well. Park was swinging in thinking he'd get the... Might have the ball flicked away, but he was tackling from behind. Like, you know, you're not going to win the ball there. Like, you know, and he was better off and maybe just staying with him and, and with Morrissey and run out that play instead of 
the foul was there. Who was there? Hayes was ready to get involved again, like, you know, on that possession play. But then again, that loose play where where, where the ball came out from um, Barrick Mannion at the end, like, and they said, oh, the ref, he kept his card in his pocket and didn't book him. Because he was right there. He says, well, if Hayes, I can't give him a yellow now and have to not do anything to Hayes, you know. So, like, if God, if he got a yellow card there now or a red card, so the Galway crowd would have went nuts, like. You know, and the referee then is going to get loads of it in, like, and it was there, you know, everybody's looking at it. But if you see the play again, like, if that whole free mightn't have happened with Parag Mannion, you know, yeah. if he just stayed running after, but there was so many lads, you know, messing with the ball, messing, a lot of lads not going in hard challenge to win the ball before that free ever came. So, like, I would have said, here, we'll give away a free there. The problem was three seconds beforehand. That ball should have never went out there. You know, so some frees happen like that, lads, ty- bodies are tired. No more than the play going across the end of the field. How many plays were there, you know, body, mind, tired, he's just left out, you know, vexed. I'm the big man and getting hit the whole time. Start using your body, use your shoulders. Use the body right, like, you know, your hurl is there to defend you as well, like, you know. But you don't like any lad that hit a lad across the head with a hurl is a coward in my eyes, you know. I always said it, you know, if you want to hit a lad across the head, drop your hurl, take off the hamlet and say, right, are you man enough? This crack is slapping. And he covered his lad across the head. And what is it? Like, you're an idiot. You can't hit a lad across the head now. You're you might as well your head, you know. You're listening to too much Jake Paul. <laughs> oh, that happened. It's still going across the road to watch that count. But, um, no, but I, I used to always say that. Like, I used to say, I used to, couldn't understand. The slimy lad, I always said, the lad that hits your slimy slap is the coward. The lad that stands up in front of you and you're looking at him all day and he's running into you. That's the lad I said to you, 10 out of 10. He's a hardy boy. He's a lad that's committed. The lad that's either is going to give a lazy slap, is either a coward or he's tired. And that's why I'm now. Now, Kyle Hayes can answer for himself like that. <laughs> he's a lot bigger than Johnny Marr. I'd be lost behind him altogether. You can see me at all. But uh, I just think, like, you know, hurling is hurling. It's a, like the men, the lad, every lad that's on the field now is, is, are fine athletes. Like, they're all serious, serious athletes. Like, the, we have lads out there, and Limerick lads left, let us look. Like, we've lads there six or two, six or three. You sure, they look normal. They look like you're looking at small lads, but they're big lads. But the teams they're up against are big, big men. You know, like, and, you know, physicality is in it. Like, a lot of these lads could drop the hurl and take up rugby and fill a centre place in any rugby team. That's the physicality and where we're at in Holland. Like, a lot of these lads could actually line out on rugby teams now and don't fear nothing because they're built for it. Like, you know, like, and I just think, um, do the, do the buys on the sideline, do the referees pump a bit more money in them, give them a bit, give young lads out in the field, get young linesmen, pump money into them. They're pumping money into everything else but bar referees. So if a lad could leave Hurling, just say Paul just said left Hurling a few years, right? And was fit and well and said, I'd love to go out the referee. I'm not going to bother you. You get nothing for it. But if you get up to a few matches and play in the Grove Park, like it's the incentive for me leaving Hurland that you'd love to be still involved. Well, I think Grove Park are missing a big, big one. And the whole, the whole, the whole GEA are missing a big one. Like the Gahin Guinnesses, the Gahin Bank of Ireland, the Gahin, all these big sponsors and to sponsor all these. When I was in Australia, Paul was in it. You see any referee, Aussie Rules, they are printed with um, sports, um, uh, sponsorships and who's in front of the camera for the whole game is the referee right so anybody would be mad to get sponsorship if you get that you see Crow Park would want to pull out of that right get a pull out of it but give leave the kitty there that your money is there that young men out of the game are up to it know exactly what's going on and off the ball and if you have linesmen and you have lads that are willing I tell you the game the game will stay going but the game will be tidied up a lot quicker because there is lads out there and we're having a lot of conversations that we're blaming the refs or whatever. How hard are the refs getting in? You know, you have to look at it that way too, you know, and linesmen as well. Like, you know, you have to put the money and that's into every county. It's great in Crow Park because the top refs are there. But down into the county scenes, down in your own clubs, all they tell you there, there's some referees, it's the Lord Jesus. You know, you're saying to yourself, you go out here, you know quite well it's going to be this game. It's going to be full on work because he's not going to live from the 40 to the 40 and he's not going to make it from the 21 down to the other 21 in, in, in 30 seconds. He'll drop. So he there's lads that like to run around the middle of the field to ref 
And then <laughs> you wonder why lads are getting sent off. And then you have the lads in the young powers and the inside. He goes in, did you see that? I seen that. And you wonder where he's looking. You know, like, it's all, it's, it's an area where the whole lot has to be cleaned up. And unless money is pumped into it and young men are out there and former players helping the referees, like, some lads are deadly there to be able to sell referees. There's a lot of referees and these referees didn't order at all. Now, I know it takes that away, they've great interest in that. But it's different when you know the game. That you play it and you know your, your tricks yourself, and lads are getting and they're pulling them and they're dragging them. Like, I could see that play you know, even standing on the sideline. I could, I'd be watching the corner for hours because you're going in to tell him, Will you stop trying to go with your man at the very start? Because he's going to pull you back. And then you're going to lash. And then the first thing when the ball comes, what did you see first? The lash. So it's a free out. But the man had found it before him. So, like, you know what I mean? Like, these things are happening. So, like, a lot of players would be able to tell that to referees. And if you were the referee that's bang on and he's and lads know the run price, I'm not going to get away with anything today. I have to hurl. Hurl hard. Hurl at 100 mile an hour and just mark my man, beat my man in every race to the ball because you know there's a nod thing you might get away with. But the certain teams that you go against and referees, you know you're going to get away with a load of stuff. There's other things and they just don't want to tolerate it. So... It's a, it's a conversation for a long, long time again. And I don't want to get guys, as we said, we talked about Carl Chagherty there for a long time. And the boys were defending and defending. But can Kenny even go on our arms? They pass every lad on the 50 50 balls. They were the greatest lads pulling your arms, flicking your elbows, and they're winning our arms and getting away with it. You have to fight and you have to hurl at the edge too. You know, and this is the edge where lads hurl to the to the fine edge that test the referee, like Jackie Turner would tell you, like, you know. There was referees, they knew they could really go to the edge. Like, I remember playing one club, I learned Brian Gavin, and he'd let you absolutely, you know, it was tough, tough, tough stuff. Then you have another referee, you go out the next day, he was down from court, he came up to me one day and he says, there's a spot of blood in your shirt there. I says, where? He says, I, you have to go. I said, there's no blood in me. Shirt. You have to go off this game or else I'm sending you. I'm here, son, to the sweet Jesus. They're the lad nearly rolling on the ground before you get up, you'll be fine. This lad's saying, spot of blood, go on, cheers, you're... So, like, there's, there's a lot of ways to look at it differently, like, too, you know, so. I don't know. I, I just think Kyle, he did hit the slap. It should have been dealt with. It wasn't right. I give the benefit of the doubt to the ref that he didn't see it. And as for the linesman, he uh, he can answer for himself. But I, I'm only answering for the ref that if his back was to it, he can't see, he couldn't see the slap. But still, it doesn't say that he got away with it. If the linesman did see it, he should have said, you know, bottom line. They didn't stand up. They didn't call it. They were afraid. So... What do you do? <laughs> Just on that, Paul, uh, Gigi's made some excellent points there about referees. and It's been talked about as well in football whether there should be an incentive to get more um, suppose, younger people as refs. But at the same time, there has to be some sort of an incentive that's appealing for refs because ultimately the way Twitter and everything is at the moment what's the appeal to be a ref like if you are just going to get abuse and like there definitely can be something there where maybe younger players have recently retired from the game or something can get involved first like entering the lights and you say incentives like what's going to incentivize someone is it money is it just to stay involved like i'd say a lot of people it's probably be money if like if you're going to take the abuse maybe they have to give them more i don't know um like I think at inter county level, I don't think it's too bad. Um, like I, the ref and standard isn't too bad there. I do think they could get more help from the linesman. Like there's what you could turn around and ask the linesman something, and he turn around and go, "Oh, sure, it's not my say. I I can only do so much." Well, yesterday the point is like that linesman should have turned around when there was two players like behind the line. Well, like with the with that linesman, I I actually tried to watch it back a few times. I like was he right in front of it? Yeah, he was just down from it and he was just holding the flag, pointing. So, like, you know what, like, look, I, I was in a game, I played a game before where the linesman come out into the pitch and he goes, number 14 has to get a red card, no questions asked, has to be a red card. And then the referee turned around and gave him a yellow. And I turned around, I was like, after the game, I was like, why was that? He was always stamped down his head three times. And I was there going, well, sure, fair enough. Well, sure, then the linesman's telling the ref and he's saying, he's saying he's seen it. But then the ref then more or less gives them the two fingers and only gives them the yellow. So I think linesmen, how much of a say do they get? I don't know. Sure, it's like an unwritten rule. Do you know what I mean? 
Um, in the club scene, like, look, there's, there's no, it's a problem with the, the, the refs, like, you know, the, don't have enough of them, I suppose. And, you know, some of them obviously don't want to abuse and whatnot. And, like, like not, not to be going on, like, I, our second county final, it's no hidden, no hidden um, talk. Like, John McDonough, like, didn't have a great game, like, and a lot was let go. Um, but you're kind of scratching your head there saying when you're seeing him refing it and you look at someone who's a very good ref, like Brian Keown, who's young, and um, being out looked for, like, you know, they've looked past him and gone to a really old kind of, like John, like what age he is, but like obviously wasn't up to the mark. Like, so you kind of have to ask the questions. It's does the refs, some of them are there and young enough, but yet they're being overlooked. Um, I don't know. There's some head scratching moments with it all. It's a bit of a farce, really. I don't know. Um, with the Kyle Hay- to go back to the Kyle Hayes incident, like I think after five, ten minutes, if you're around long enough, you'll know how the referee is refing the game. So, for example, hurling at the moment, hand passing. You'll know after two after the first five minutes is the ref letting that go, and then you'll start seeing lads throw the ball around, like it's it's a joke at the moment, really. Like what's a hand pass, what's not a hand pass? So you kind of see that um, with the red card. I just thought, to be honest, I thought it was an absolute joke how he didn't get the line. Um, like look, he does get hit across the legs, and I'm sure it was an accident by Brian uh, that hit him across the legs. But um, I think when I watched it back and slow, slow, you just see the look on Kyle Hayes' face where he, it's actually, a, he's seen a small flash of red for a second and it's bang. So like, it's not even like an accident. That I think they tried to make out that he was trying to go, oh, Limerick ball. Like, I, like will you stop? Which, um, yeah. Where I would say, okay, the referee hasn't seen it. The linesman probably, can we take it out of their hands where did we put enough pressure on the ref to get him sent off. So if you watch it back, I think as a Keenan Fahey comes in and gives him a bit of a, a knock and puts him back two or three yards, and next thing he's kind of up against the bumps into someone, and he knows he's in hot water here now, Kyle Hayes, and he kind of doesn't react. Where I'd be kind of saying, right, if we had someone calling at him again a second time and a third time, not Welton, not in Schubert, but going like, what the fuck are you after doing? You can't get away with that. There wasn't a, there wasn't like a big deal made out of it. Where I felt, watching the back, I was like, if we had three or four players going bananas, now you're putting pressure on the ref. Where, like, say, for example, Wick all we know, over the last couple of years, they've lost Joe. The David Burke wasn't on the pitch. Um, even Johnny Cohn, like, where you had a couple of experienced players, and, like, not, like, and David Burke is very good at it. Like, if he was close to the ref, said, here, hold a minute here, no, that lad's on a yellow. He's after whacking him into the face. You can't be at that. And there's players getting a bit frantic then it's not as easy for the ref. And I don't think he overlooks it. I think if we did a bit more, I think we could have we could have strong handled him into getting him off. Um, and then, like, you know, you kind of think then, like, two or three minutes later, Kyle Hayes wins a free yeah. on and you're going, it's like kind of, you're just kind of going, mm. Now, at the same time, it's the league, it's highlighted, he's going to be probably watched. But if he did get sent off, it's all, if you get sent off in a calendar in the year, like, it's always in the back of... The, the rest head like you know like if it came later on there and he done something his card is kind of marked so I just think it's an opportunity to kind of miss that way you know but um, like look as I said just going back I, I just felt like you know maybe we could get a bit cuter and do a bit more Yeah like there there definitely is a narrative at the moment that maybe Limerick have got away with one or two of those strikes um, key stages and that has been highlighted just to get in to the match, obviously finished on the final score line of Limerick twenty four going nineteen. When that Kylie's incident happened, it was Limerick twenty one going nineteen. Then Limerick kicked the last three points to win out by five point victors in the end. Paul, after that performance that Galway gave, um, the first half after that first half they were chasing the game. They were seven eight points down found their way back into the game. Where are they now? Like, obviously, we know from the team that Henry Shefflin picked that this league has been for him to find players. There, there's no question that. But, like, how do you assess their league campaign so far and the performance yesterday? Um, sure, the league, like, the league is for... It is for that reason, like to find players and kind of test it up. So, like, I wouldn't be panicking, you know. Um, I, I don't think there's a need, there's, there's a need to 
Um, like, look, when you're losing, it's not good, obviously. They'll want to win the next one for sure um, because you don't want a rut to start. But, like, when, when you asked me to come on here, I, I think I said it earlier, I had to ask someone who won the league last year. Do you know I I, I actually couldn't remember it because it, it's all about our Irons, like. And then, you know, someone t- told me Waterford and then they also said to me, but they didn't win a championship game. Do you know? So, it's a long year, like. Do you know? And, like, I think Limerick... Watching them yesterday are able to throw the ball around very comfortably. Like they, it's nearly like no panic. It's they're kind of coming out and there's it, like there's lads all around. There's loads of bodies, but yet they just do the right thing, give the right pass, and the next thing work it up into a, an area in the pitch where the delivery is in well. And then you see we tried to do that, and we were kind of knocking it and dropping it, and it was kind of a bit sticky. So I, I think look when the hurling the our hurling will get better and we'll get better at it as the year goes on so I, I don't I, I'm not panicking like you know I, I wouldn't be panicking I think there's like there's some good things too like you know like Tom Mann had a great performance yesterday Um, I don't think it's by any way accident that he got lashed a few times I, I'd say they probably seen that he was going well and probably went after him a small bit Um, Conor Cooney done well yesterday you know at centre forward which was a, and I know he operated a bit of wing as well but that was a big thing as well that was good for us like, you haven't played Conor Whelan inside, which is a big thing because, in my opinion, he's probably the best in the game that when you put the ball in, his ball retention in there, he's keeping it in there, he's it doesn't come out easy. So that's a big asset that we haven't used. Um, do you know, and then Brian Cannon looks very, very lively when he's came on. But then Shefflin, like you said, trying to fight players, is probably looking at, OK, Kevin Cooney's doing OK, Martin McManus is doing OK. If they they can come in and come out, they either start or at least come in. So like, there's plenty there's plenty of positives like as well. Like I know we're not winning the game, and I actually thought that Limerick looked a lot better than us. They're, they're a lot better than everyone at the moment, to be honest. In 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 all aspects, um, physically they were able to hold us up in the tackle and overturn us a bit better. Um, you know, all you can do is kind of drop us because you're going to be pulled for steps. You know, there's loads of work ons. Um. But I think that, uh, like, when Keane Lynch went off, I think it allowed us to get back into the game. I think he is a big pin for Limerick that if we come across them, he needs to be marshaled out of it. And my reason for saying it is because I remember I watched the Alarm final from the camera behind the goals and just watched, and he is pulling everything. And, like, it's, he, like he actually looks like he's not even sprinting at times, but, like, he's always getting used to the ball. Like, so, like... Just an example, yesterday, they obviously looked inside and they were playing a two-man from forward line and they felt it wasn't on. And he ran up the middle, he turned around, a little spoon pass to someone else, wheeled back around, spoon pass to someone else, waited to get players out and shot it from 65 yards out over the bar, where other teams would probably just throw it into the full forward line anyway and in a 50-50, where if you watch the ball, they actually gave into the full forward line yesterday. Very rare was it a 50-50 was when your man was nearly had made the breakaway. So I just think like there, 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 there's like there, there's things to pull over. Like look, it is only the league. And like their performances up until now against Cork, I thought in the first 10 minutes we're gonna hammer them. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, we're going well here. And another thing with the hurling is that I think Joe Canning might have highlighted it yesterday in the roundup is that we struggled um, dealing with a sweeper in front of our mm. two men for forward line, and we did get that let Cork back into the game. To be honest, um, and we struggled again with it yesterday. So, like when the ball, when you're not making the ball stick, especially on the middle third, and and then you're starting to hit it in, you're kind of you're going to get overturned, which puts you under savage pressure. And then if you're rushing your, I suppose delivery in, you're under pressure to with their delivery. So that's something they need to work on. But like. I suppose to answer your question, um, I'd say I don't think it's all bad, to be honest. I think there's some fine performances over the few days. I do think that there is work-ons, which is probably dealing with the sweep or getting sharpened up or hurling around the middle third. Um, so I wouldn't be on no need to panic. And it's a good thing, I think, that you get to see more players, you know. Um, it, like, it's, it, it's, it, it's, a, it's a mixed bag, really. That's, that's how I put it, you know. Yeah, I think that's that's a fair point to raise. And even a point Paul does raise there, Eugene, is going in possession last year, even Joe Canning was highlighting it last night. 
like a pass could have been given earlier and Galway seemed to give the pass later and then Limerick were in to stifle them. Like in possession and around that middle third as Paul has touched on and when Limerick do have Barry Nash back as that extra man and even if it's sweeper later on in the year, I think that's the big learning point for Galway from yesterday that they do need to be better and work the ball better when in possession. Yeah, like I heard him head up a little bit more. More vigilantly and more sharp as well. Like when you're hurling with your hurl head up and you see that one quick move, like you're with some, it's like players you wonder are to be told to wait for another move. That's it feels that we're stuck in this moment where, as you say, Limerick who play the ball in the one move, they know exactly where that ball is going, whether it's one net against even in top of our sweeper, they give them a chance to win it. What will they do? They'll hit him a high one. They won't hit him alone with the sweeper in front of him. They'll hit a high one for the fact that it's holding in the air a bit. It's giving him a chance to go out. It's the way they use the possession, the simple ball they're able to use um, very effectively. Where we're coming out, as Paul says, and, and a lot of people are saying, we're coming out, we're hurling, we're waiting. Then we're hitting this ball, and it seems to be only a 50-50 ball. Like, if you're coming out with a man and, and you hurl up and you see the first lad move and the, the ball is, God, you got it when, you, when you're free. You have to play a good ball. The lad that's on the ball, you know, there's nobody on you. We're using the sweeper. Why? You're creating this pass and you're on your own. So if you're on your own, you got to hit a good pass to return it as well. Now, Limerick have that really, really defined well because we talk about hurling with your head up. They'll play four or five passes until the boys can get away from their markers. They'll hold it around the middle. As Paul says there, they'll jiggy with it. They won't just hit the ball. But why they're doing that? Because I think our backs are good. Like Our backs are always been good. But like where the sweeper is, they look where the sweeper is. Our sweeper thinks it's going to go there. Right? When the Limerick lad is coming out, he's trying to anticipate maybe that's where the space is. I'm going to move there. Limerick lad will run. But hold on a minute. They'll give the one or two more passes before another lad can make a move. Right? And to hurl with your head up, it's two passes. It's a quick one. Until the rest, as you were saying there, Paul, they're scooping the ball over the shoulder. Lynch was there and he waiting, he waiting. You know, they know that the one quick ball, only Galan gets it when he was in there with Limerick. You'll see, when Flanagan are, there's two inside, the big long one in Crow Park, because everybody is out, right? And Limerick will give that real fast, quick one in, because I know your man will fucking win it. And it'll be a high one. He'll win it, right? And he's able to turn it. There's still massive space. But when Limerick then are on with the, the their, their, everybody's pushed up in them and whatever, they play around the middle and they play the hand passes until the runs are there and then they look up and the best run that's made, they play it. But the running isn't finished. That lad is only getting possession again. If you turn your man, you put it over your back. If not, you can be sure somebody will be on his own taking a pass back off that lad and it could be the same guy that gave it to him, making a 30 more yard run. He might have given a 50 yard pass but he'll continue his run into that other space where it was created and they get this simple ball out and people are wondering, who in the name of Jesus is picking up that lad? But it's the way they move with the wave. But the lads that move, don't forget, there's lads moving back that they're not going to get caught on a counter on a quick ball or a quick puck out. Where yesterday, they were so good at that. Galway against Cork, the same thing. We just lacked that little bit. If our forwards don't win the 50-50 ball, you see a few lads with their head and uh, they're nearly shaking a temper, you know, giving out to themselves. And the run is given up after, like a play there went yesterday where the ball came across the field. Galway lad lost it. There was two lads outside the Galway lad. We lost it. Ball went across. You could see the two Galway lads strolling back and shaking their heads. Like, get over it. Get over it. Get back out after the ball. When Limerick lose the ball, right, they will work harder. The next lad works harder. They'll work harder to read really commend their, their, their stupid ball or their bad one. They won't get, but our lads seem to, oh, you know, everything stops it. You know, you don't. Whelan doesn't stop. You know, he stayed going and going. He's the nightmare of a back because he is that made... Though, Eugene, is that though at stages in that first half where Galway, you see Merlin McManus at stages where he was around three Limerick backs and it's 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 just impossible. Like, was... Is that where Galway should have, like, are you almost playing into Limerick's hands at stages there when there was one forward against three backs? Like, the, there wasn't two forwards 
trying to maybe dart out to the corners. Uh, like you're, you're asking a lad to go in and match challenge against three. No, then you're turning around. This is where it kills me is a ball when that goes back out, just say go and clear back down. They'll play this ball back in again. Now, your man is after trying his best to three, and then they fire the ball the far side of the field for him to run. And expect this lad at the inside to make another 50 to 80 yard pass. It was like wheeling up a draw park to play one in the corner. They were waiting, they'd fire it and ask him to run across and, and be running against two or three lads. So, like, it's carnage. You're better off at playing it. Keep scoring from 50, 60 yards out. Don't be wasting or just wasting the ball. It's like they're hitting the ball in to reshape themselves to defend and get ready. Like, you're only playing a defensive game then. Like, like really and truly, why is the whole point of putting one ball in? Bear your Kyle Hayes and your six foot six, and you hit him one ball against three lads. Well, there's only one ball you hit him, is a high one because he might have some chance of him. But trying to put in any other ball, three backs around you, you're playing like Paul would tell you, I've often had a lad whizzing in behind me. All I had to do was flick the hurl, play the ball, give him a little nudge, run. And all the ball is running into the lad behind you. But straight away, I know that lad has the ball behind me. What am I doing? I'm jetting away from him straight away. Because I know I can return that pass. Because that one lad that's left mark of the three of us. Well, like, he's not. He's trying to get block the first lad. So you break it through. The spare man has it. What is he doing? Quick pass to the 20-yard line. I can shoot away because I'm unknown. So, like, they're setting up an attack there. What are we doing? Sitting, waiting for that again. Breaks down. You know, it's it's messy. If you're going to put two, put in two workers, if you want to play that way, give them a chance. Leave two lads in there against three then. And let it, let it be in the middle, let it be a high ball the whole time. They might have some chances with the ball breaking. But this crack of putting the ball in uh, to a lad and three into the corner where there's two lads, you know, <clears throat> there he gets it in the hands. I can't see him winning it and turning him. He horses into another lad to break him down to start the attack. And you can see where that ball can cross the field. It could be yards of 60 yards of a free way down in front of you. After that ball doesn't work because the switch to play, everybody is over drifted that side of the field. You watch Limerick. When they switch a play, the lads will turn the ball. They'll take it down where the space is. They'll run. They'll nearly run down well. How many times have we often seen them taking a solo run? Taking 50, 60 yards of a solo run. And everybody's reshaping. Ball goes over the bar. So, like, there's nobody in front of you. You can even pass it to a lad down there. Do you know, it makes no sense. I, I can't. I don't. I just thought we were one of our lads, lads. Like, not getting away from our own lads now at the moment. But, like, think of it. Our smallest forward is the year we won the All Ireland was wheeling and he's six foot he was our smallest forward everybody else was up to Johnny Glynn was six foot six six foot four six foot five six three six three what are our two subs in Braham Burke and Flynn now I know they were going well they haven't hurled as good as they did that time and I haven't seen them hurling as good as that time but it worked and the two lads that came on as subs six foot three six foot four what was head, what was Galway doing? Driving in a high ball. What were we able to do? We were able to win the ball in the air, maybe give the pass out. Johnny Glynn was a torment. He, Joe Cannon got so many ball off him. But like, all the lads were big ball winners. Okay? They were able to, you were able to hit that ball now with one and two because he was a big lad. Like. You know, so we had six forwards. We had eight forwards to one in our and our smallest lad was six foot. Now, look at our six forwards today. Compared, okay, I can say, and we have two of them still there, right? So, if we're going to come with a game, you're going to have to come with it fairly quick with our forwards, and they're going to have to start moving in a different way. And they're going to have to start moving maybe the way Kitty moved previous to we won the All Ireland. I remember Henry, he used to be the orchestrator. He used to move, he started corner forward, he'd slip the whole way across the three positions, he'd even do a full square rectangle, but where he went, he drew a lad, and he what he was was a DK. But the running off the ball, like Eddie Brennan had pop up, DJ, you know, Richie Hogan had pop up, like Richie wasn't the biggest lad, he, but they used him for a small lad. Now, could we use Evan Nyland the same way as Richie Hogan? Would you put Evan Nyland in the same league as him? Would you put, you know, Collins for Clare? He was a small, but the work rate, the work he done, everybody moved. Clare won in our learning. Look what, what Clare won in our learning against Cork and the replay with. Look at their six forwards. Right? You could compare their six forwards to our six forwards today now. But you have to come up with a game plan with them. And you want to come up with it soon because if we're waiting on Wheeling to be that man inside, 
I'd love him inside because he'd be a nightmare, lads. But we're nearly having to use him now in other games out to win the ball. You know, we're not winning the ball as frequently. We're waiting for it to play. And our small lads, if they're going to be looking for a nice handy ball, they'd want to toughen up fairly quick now. And they'd want to start fire. They'd want to start getting hardier and hardier. And don't be waiting for the handy ball out because that's grand in training. But I can guarantee you, you know, I used to just love Cody the way he'd bang, he'd bang in a lad out of the blue. And nobody knew him. He didn't love his man the match. Why? It was the way the rest of them moved and took the responsibility. Two lads would take it. And everybody would be thinking, they're the water lads. But four of the lads would pop up. Might have had poor games, but they'd all pop up with three, four pints. So your man in the army was brilliant for it. What do you call him? One like him. Uh, yeah, Larkin to tell you himself. Like, I played him in a club championship at Ireland semi-final down in Torres. Myself and me, all right, ended up marking him. And we wouldn't give him a smell, but he was trying to do the same way, waiting for the pass, and we knew straight away, we're in his face, even the runs. It was the running off the ball we watched him that day, and we, we just subdued him. You know, and they didn't have a go to man did. But it was the running off the ball he was doing was, was the key way to block him down. And we got him to kick in his way that way. And another way against Belly Hill, the way to break down the Kilkenny at Thrive, that way was move the ball on the ground. Why aren't we moving the ball against the big lads against Limerick? When that ball is in the middle third, and we're in the smaller lads, and they love getting the ball, as you say, coming, running, passing around the middle of the field. That's one whip ball through the middle. Cuts out all that. And when if you, no point having one far inside, you have two good lads to work hard inside, they get a whip of the ball, 50-50, comes in like a shot. I don't care. Paul, you'd even say it. It's a, ba- it's a nightmare's back. It's a nightmare's, you know, it's a nightmare for a back man. A first whip when the ball comes in. We've often done it. I've done it with a club team. To Now, I know it's maybe off the cuff a bit here, but I trained a club team to a, a, a club in Ireland and we had to take Midford down in the semi-final. And we were down with a, a possession game and the first 10 minutes of both halves, the girls, you do not rise the ball until you are on your own. Every other ball, you move that ball as fast. And Midford had seven all-stars. Seven county team players on it. And they're all in the middle. When we broke the ball, we got one, two in the first half, the first 10 minutes. And in the second half, we got a penalty. We got another one, two. It was the difference in the game. We had two, four score with the tactic we read. And we said the only way was it. They didn't like the ball whizzing by them because they were so good at winning the, the rook balls. They were so good at winning, you know, the messy ball. They were so, the 50-50 ball. They were so good. And then they turn you over and their game was running at you. And, you know, they used to run over teams. Now, Limerick are doing that as well. But if teams start moving the ball a little bit quicker in Limerick, or, you know, we're not getting over the ball, we're not winning too much possession. The odd quick ball could really put that flight that sends a half-back lane back a bit more. Somebody going out in the middle, they're getting the ball in too, too easy. You know, you don't have to be doing it for the whole game. You know, it's just that. I just find, you know, we would want to be coming with... In that Galway, in fairness, like... We will get better at that, and, and I know, like whipping on the ball is kind of nearly gone now. If you do it, they're kind of scratch. Yeah. What I mean in, in terms of like is that like when the ball's in passing the middle third, you snap it first time. It's in your hand. You don't like no dropping it. Yes, yes, we were dropping it a few. It was kind of sticky, but like and then then getting it up off the pitch, lads were kind of struggling. But I think as the gear goes on and the pitches get finer, and look, to be I'm sure there'll be a different team out there that he'll have his have his, have it fine tuned. That that ball will be moving faster. And the delivery will be harder for the sitting six or whatever he is there. And, and like you know, I, I think we will get better at that. Like you know, I I'm not panicking. Like yesterday, oh no, well, I wouldn't be panicking. Like I, the, no, definitely. Um, like our hurling wasn't as sharp as they were. Like when when they were playing that short thing, they were very good at it. But I was only saying I've never seen a team spoon the ball like as much yeah. like, as they did. Like they must obviously be practicing it. And uh, maybe they're trying to get away from the hand passing because it's refs are pulling. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I yeah. think that Galway have pace and strength in the likes of Connor and B- and Brian inside, and like you know, even Martin and Kevin just thrown at the mix there as well. And there's other forwards, I'm sure, through, as the year goes on. But I wouldn't be panicking, like you know, like I know you're saying to move the ball fast, but it's also the speed you're hurling in that middle third. Like I give you an example now. Yesterday, like Limerick were very good at. That getting it up our side but like hookouts are coming fast I wouldn't even say it was 1v3 I just think that they were very cute at the way they spread out the hookout was coming and they were able to work it to nearly their own 65 in the split of a second and then they delivered it do you know what I mean whereas we were kind of going 
it was breaking down. Next time we're going for it. And like, but while this is happening, we're looking at the ball, your man back at full back there has now got close to the lads. So it's a second slower. Do you know what I mean? So goal mm. as the year goes on with that, that like. Ah, yeah, well, I would, as I say, I wouldn't be panicking. I'd just like to see our lads, as I say, that a bit more sharper. Like, all fairness, we, we were hard to fall away last year as well. Like, you know, we were only a, a puck of away as well, you know, at the end of the day, you know. But um, I just find, when you're saying that about Limerick, how clever they are, maybe we, if we had the box a little bit clever yesterday, I just thought Limerick, their gas, when they break down the play, Right, and if they lose the ball in a score, and just say Parik man and just gets away from his man, and he's down, and he, he makes the run, gets the pass, the ball is over the bar. It's like the Limerick lad because he he lost the ball. He's gone off in another direction for that quick puck out, as you were saying, Paul. Oh, you know when the play, it's like the only way they get you back is they move straight away when they lose that. Like the movement for the next lad, to, like he could be the lad that the ball was put up to, and he loses possession. And as you say, if a quick ball is hit straight away, you're not going to lose your marker. But, you know, if you come out and you play that one pass, Limerick are just going off moving somewhere else because they know when the ball goes dead, bang, here's the lad now. Jesus, he made the run across. Why didn't he? He lost the ball and he, had, he knew exactly what he wanted to do was win another ball back. You know, so wherever they move, it's like that whole middle third know themselves. Like, don't be surprised if the midfielders up and wing back or the opposite side wing forward getting the ball. From a quick play, you know, because it's it's strange into them. They're very good at doing it. Yeah. Now the other side of that too is no, I know they didn't have Galan inside, but the way they set up yesterday, they never really threatened us for a goal. I think yeah. you know, we probably did look like we could have got one, you know. Um, so like you know, they were kind of doing their damage from out the pitch, if you know what I mean. So um if we happen to kind of, we were going in a bit deeper, trying to get the ball inside, and I know Martin kind of popped up to Conor Cooney that time, and, like, you know, I just felt we looked a bit more like we could get a goal. Um, and if we did happen to get one, you know, it would put a lot more pressure on them, like, you know. Yeah, Conor was very unlucky there in the first half. Just just went over in the end. But, Paul, you touched on some of the um, positives. Conor Cooney and Kevin Cooney were obviously positives yesterday. Tom Monaghan was a positive, but... Defensively as well, like TJ Brennan and Joseph Cooney as well, like really impressive as well um, throughout the day. But I think TJ Brennan caught one there at the end, done really well. Joseph Cooney was coming out with the world of ball as well. Yeah, uh, sure. Look, TJ like definitely done himself no harm anyway, for sure. Um, and it's a funny one, like, because I think he was in the panel last year, might have been dropped. And I think he was, and now even, was he in at the start of this year? I'm not really sure. I can't remember. And now he's found himself... Um, in the mix and look it's a, it's a great thing that there's another one do you know what I mean um, Joe Cooney yeah, had a good game as well and uh, defensively like do you know as I said do you know we were probably um, not conceding the goal they got no goal threat but it was the middle third that kind of as I said the damage was done um, Is there a biggest challenge Paul to find 8-15 and a consistent 8-15 because there definitely does seem to be Options in the backs, and you could pick probably your one to seven, but maybe there's probably a few. You know, that's what that's what the championships are won like because that's what the the scoring is done like. If you get first to eight, you stop, put your best stoppers, and then after that, you're like, you know, that's what you want. I wouldn't say it's where we're defined, but you know, just to go back to saying positives, like you know, um, like. I, I think if you look at it, like Dottie Burke hasn't been there yet, like, and he's he's had how, how many all stars, like, you know, and we haven't we have seen him in the league campaign yet. That's another big, and he's a big figure in the team to come in as well, like, you know, so, um, like finding TJ, he done well, you know, um, so like, you know, if something went wrong now, could he come in corner back? You know, we haven't seen Finton yet either, like, there's other lads to come in, you know, so look, there's still plenty of time, um. Joe, you know, even there yesterday as well, like Darren Morrissey come on and he done it fairly well. Yeah. It was good to see, you know, I actually thought he could have like, flick up for a cornerback. Huh? Excellent flick up for a cornerback by Darren Morrissey there. Yeah, like do you know he's he um look, he didn't have his best game against Cork, you know, and probably would have been a bit disappointed to be taken off. Um I felt he probably could have started this game because it would have been a good test from against Limerick, but when he came on, he done very well. Would like that now, some of the ball that came in was exceptional for his man that he literally, there was one that stood out to me, I think they worked it 
to the nearly midfield and the ball was literally out in front here, like out in front. And he was behind them kind of pulling, like not much more he could do. The ball had just came over Park Mannion, which cut out the sweeper, bang, over the bar. And you're kind of going, sure, what can you do about that? Like, you know, um, but like he's... It was a good scorer, but it's good skill now. No, it was a good man skill, like, ball, but like, yeah, you know, yeah. As a defender, you know, yeah. sometimes you kind of go, oh, sure, look, what can you do about that? Do you know, it's like a fella letting him shoot from the sidelines. You're like, look, do you know, fair, more, fair, fair folks, see if you want to say, you know. Um, but like him, him coming on was a, was a positive as well. Like after, you know, like I think he slipped, might have slipped twice against Cork and two goals went in, which is very unlucky. Like, but like he's a good player now, do you know, that was left on the sideline yesterday starting. Um, so like defensively, like, you know, there's, there's lots of lads to come back into it as well. Like, so... Um, and la- and lads getting chances as well, which is good. Um, e- even up the far side, now you know it's going to be interesting to see. You mentioned him there a few minutes ago with Evan, like you know, um, yeah. be interesting to see what happens to him now because Connor came back and yesterday was hitting the freeze, and you know Evan kind of coming out plays that kind of third half forward role against Cork and started very very good, and like you know, I I honestly think he's the best free taker in the country. I played with him in in college at Hurling, and I remember. I think we got to a semi-final and we were beaten by Mary I, but he missed one free in the whole campaign. And there was like four group games, a quarter final and a semi, like, do you know? Um, and like if I, I know you, you could only you said earlier, you you can only get so far with a good free taker, but it definitely helps. <laughs> oh yeah, how'd you got it? Yeah. Especially, especially when he's taking them from way out, like so it's gonna be interesting to see. And like he will chip in a bit from play as well, and especially when he's taking the freeze, he's confident so. Um, yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens there. And like Connor, obviously, is a big player for us, size wise and everything. And him going, I was very happy to see him going well um, yesterday, uh, be, or, or uh, because it's it's a big thing for Galway if Connor Cooney's going well. I can promise you that. Like if we're going to win it, yeah. if we're going to win all Ireland, Connor Cooney it has to be motion. Do you expect us now, Paul, to maybe go a stronger than we've seen against Clare some week? Yeah, I do. If if the injuries and stuff and what if he has his full pick, I, I do think he probably will, yeah. Because it's probably your last good tune up game before the real stuff, because no offense to SME, like, but sure, like we should be baiting them, like, you know, and that's the last game. And like the most important thing in the league is not to be in relegation battle. Like, like it's nice to progress and get prepping games, but I think they will, yeah. I do, yeah. It, it, it probably falls something as well. Like you, you see him with a few players were getting their chance yesterday, Eugene, but there's obviously a huge amount that Shefflin has learned from yesterday of probably who is up to that level and who maybe isn't. Oh, for certainly. Like there's one thing I'd say Henry is solid with it in his own mind is his positive. I think our our backs are very good. And I think what's what's missing and have to come back is I wouldn't be worrying about her backs like, you know, as you say, you die. And I think Henry is the same. I think his main concern is he's all fairness to him now. He's given a lot of lads from their first Walsh game, whether it was in Benesloe or last year. Um, a lot of lads have been getting runs. He's given a lot of lads chances in there in the forwards, right? And, um, you know, you can have a fine lad more than well in club and because he plays a certain role. But when you go into Intercounty, you have to step up and you have to bring two or three different areas to your game. And just being the the, the one-way system of playing a lad inside, you know, a forward now could find himself anywhere in any of the positions. You know, and that's the way the forward game has gone now. And you could even find a half-forward line finds himself in the middle third the whole time, even a half-back line midfield and that. But I just think he has given a lot of lads and he's still given a few of them a fair chance and, and, and rightly so, there's one or two fresh lads, Brian, that were never played county. And they're not just going, they need a game, they need a few games under the belt to understand it as well and to get up with it. Because, you know, you have you can't just say, oh, he's useless after one game. You know, it might be his first game. Yeah, give the young lad credit. He's going to have nerves, he's going to whatever. He needs a little bit of time to gain. So he's given a lot of these lads. And Henry will know better than anyone uh, on, you know, where a lad, when it's not going to happen to him, does he need a rest? You know, maybe he's gone a bit stale. We let him drop for a while, give another lad a go. You know, and let a lad find a resort, resort, to find the the drive again. Like, but you know, I was, you know, like Jason yesterday. Jason Flynn got the start. Like, he's he, he's six foot four, six foot five. You know, you know, Connor is flying it there. Same, he's around the same length of time. And while Connor is popping in there, 
you know, it's another role for Jason. I'd say Henry's looking now, saying, like, you know, he, he's there for experience. He has every bit of it. So is there another part of his game we have to find to get the best out of Jason Flynn? Like, he's a big man. He's a big machine on him. But, you know, with his experience and what he's experienced gone by with Galway teams, you know, you'd be expecting him to stand up because Whelan stands up. You know, Cooney stands up. You know, and if he has them, if we've three pegs there and he's able to work all around the rest, maybe five or six more lads, and he's able to gel through all them, he'll, he'll get it right, all right, there's no doubt about it, but he's, he's been fair now to allow lads, giving them a chance. And I'd say he has an idea in his head who he, he, who he probably knows who his four forwards are and where he's, what way am I going to get two more in there or what way am I going to set up to get two more in there? Because I'm, I think there's a lot of lads at the same level, same power, they're all chipping in with a couple of pints here, a couple of pints there. There's nobody really stepping up and blowing it out of the, the water. Like, there's nobody really, like, Cooney yesterday was our top scorer, you know? And, like, you know, he had 12 pints. You know, we got two pints off Kevin. We got one pint off Fah. Like, we got our subs come in. We only got a nine pint. Like, yeah, Henry would be very disappointed with the return from your forwards, too, that... You know, there wasn't a lot more scores. You know, you look at the Limerick team, you know, you go through them, you know, you'd have Tom Morrissey, you'd have pints, three from threes, you've Lynch, three pints, you know, Casey, two pints, O'Brien, two pints, Flanny can come off, Keen Lynch, three pints. Like, that's a lot of scores from your forwards and your midfielders. Now, our two midfielders were excellent. Donahue and, uh, and for Limerick and Will O'Donoghue, and Donovan, they didn't score, but our two, our two midfielders got four points because Tom Manning was exceptional. He stood up yesterday, and you could see it yesterday. He was one of the best players we had, and deservedly so. He got his three points. And he, how many frees did he get as well? Like, you know, he was on a lot of play. So, like, he'd be very happy with Tom Manning. Tom Manning was exceptional last year in the Northern Ireland semi-final there. He worked himself. He, he, you know, he scrapped for ball. He's showing what Henry wants to see. Now, there's a few more there, I suppose, they're a little bit green to it. It took Tom Manning a couple of years to get to that, you know, all fairness. And it takes a few lads, maybe that. But if you want them coming in quick, I'd say he has an idea who, and he's waiting for to see, is there anybody going to be stepping up now? Because you, you could put three or four more in there and you could start one lad, you mightn't have to start them, but you could put the two names in a hat and pull them the way it is at the moment. Like, you know, it's not really anybody has cemented it, but you could say a few lads would cement it. But, you would nearly, could you name the six forwards for Limerick that you put out the next day? Of course you would. And you'd know who'd be on the sideline that's ready to come in and is danger. Now, you look at our six forwards and you ask the question, do we know our six forwards going to be? And have we something to come in on, off the pinch that's going to blow it out of the water? Now, that's the big question. If you want to win in Ireland, Ireland, we're going to have to sort that end of the field out. Because I think we're good from our six backs and we'll have another four more lads ready to come in because I think our backs, lads, have been the unsung heroes for the last couple of years. They've been keeping us in games. They've been outstanding. But we're not just getting the final third up there and we're not getting the return off it collectively. We're only having three lads popping up in the game. That'll win Club Earl Ireland's county finals, three forwards. To win Earl Ireland's, you need four lads. It's not going to go well for two. And two lads that's coming in, they have to make an impact. You know, that's, that's the level to get up. You know, you look, as they say, you go across the field and you look at their forwards, what they scored, and look at our forwards, what we scored yesterday. You know, we're a little bit behind there, but I think he'll get, he has to try to get the best out there now, and I think a few lads have to book up as well and, and, and you know, lead lead the charge to kind of bring in another little bit of energy in our forwards, you know. I've I, I seen the subs yesterday, you know, I've seen... You know, you get them out there, a third plate of he's giving them a chance, like he is giving them a chance. And you can't say he's not. How many forwards did we start this year and last year? You know, we, he has went through a lot of players, lads, all fairness, like, you know, so is he scratching his head and saying, is this the same with the rest of the forwards of Galway? Or is he to find a way to play with three of our main lads and work around and try the game plan? You know, that's probably where Henry's at, but I'd say he knows. Probably from, he knows he's definitely six backs. Maybe he's probably pinching these two midfielders and he probably knows three or four forwards because that's all I'd be able to pick the nail to say that you're guaranteed. You know, Brian now getting him fit again. 
you need good cannon hopping on the inside. You know, you need wheeling there. Like, there too, we need them, lads. Seriously, like. And, you know, on the half-forward line, um, you have to think, if all our backs are going well, what happened the last couple of years? Poor old Joe Cooney had to go up into the half-forward line to give us a bit of, you know, and we have to pull him back to the half-back. <laughs> you know, that just, that, that's what puts a question to me when I seen that. Now, we see Joseph back, wing back, and he's playing mighty like. And, you know, we just have to find these forwards a little bit faster than what we're, where we're at at the moment. You know, we do have to, you know. Now, I, I think it's great to see lads getting a chance. But lads, you know, I think we need a couple of more, maybe, to nail it home. And I think Henry Henry won't be far off it. He knows, but he'll have to come up with a plan if, if he's not going to be able to get... We're not able to pencil six forwards, but whoever team we're going up with, I think it's his game plan and the movement is probably the way he'd be looking at it, the way we're going to have to work with forwards, you know? That is the big thing about it, though, Paul, that, like, it, it's great to see these players getting a chance. Like, even from from your own club, like, Jerry Field and Martin McManus getting a chance, like, does that give you satisfaction in one way, like, seeing two lads from good club campaigns and underage campaigns as well, I suppose, breaking through into this goal team? Um, yeah, I'm sure, like, I don't say it's giving me good satisfaction. Like, I just think, like, he's right, there's loads of new lads getting a look in. But, do you know, last year when Henry came, it was kind of very late, do you know, and it was kind of kept under the radar. Next thing we had Henry Sheffield, like, do you know, when the manager was being appointed. And I think he probably had to pick a panel off the back of what he was being told. Now, in fairness to the man, he was at loads of club games this year. And he's obviously got to do his own looking now and pull lads in. So what he has is what he's picked, if you know what I mean. And I'm sure he has plans and ideas of what he's going to do or who he want to try. And like there's some lads that still haven't even seen yet and he's tried loads. So I think the man knows what he's at. And I think that um, he's gone after what he, what he, whatever he thinks he needs, however he puts it together now. So we'll see, time tell. But uh, it is good to see so many different lads going in from different clubs. Um, like, even there, like, you know, Jamie Ryan was very good for Loch Ray this year. Um, and I think he got, he hurt his hand or something in there. I'm sure, you know, who knows, you might see him, he might get a run there, midfield or somewhere in the next couple of weeks. And sure, like, you know, we just don't know. Would you, know. Would, do you think he should get a chance in there? Well, sure, look, if he's brought him in, it's not in there to go and play dress up. Like, you know, if he's bringing him in, he might as well, you know, get a chance in there. Like, and... I, I think Jamie will be fine. He's got wicked pace and he's he's a good finisher and he's great in the ball. So why not? If you're going, if he's bringing lads in for the panel, he's going to have to try them. Like you know, absolutely. Be interesting to take any get a look in. That's uh, all we have time for on our show today. Um, a massive thank you to Paul and uh, Eugene for coming on. Uh, Go his next game, of course, uh, Sunday week in Ennis uh, versus Clare.